So I thought um, to talk about lazy execution, I'll just get an example, um, a data set, and we'll just go through uh, the whole thing and then illustrate the three commands, compute, persist, and visualize, which um, usually tend to use them together. So before we begin, just um, keep in mind that lazy execution is also encountered outside Dask. So in Python itself, um, iterables, for instance, like uh, range, um, other iterables don't return the whole thing um, the whole thing you ask them for it, uh, at the same time. So they're also lazy executor. They just return one item at a time, say, as you're looping through this stuff. So outside that, you can also find uh, lazy execution everywhere. Okay, so I uh, actually an example uh, data set from Kaggle, which is a weather-related one. Um, you can check if you're interested in what it is. It won't make a difference for this uh, talk what the actual content is, but I wanted to big, uh, pick something that's not too small, so just to get an idea of uh, difference in execution. But basically, it's a mixture of observation and WARF data. It's about 5.4 gigabytes and 129 column and lots and lots of rows. Anyway, so I'll make the illustration just using the local scheduler, but you can use the distributed one. I'm using local. It's just simpler and less uh, things to go around. But uh, it's the same ideas, whichever scheduler you use with the distributed one, you get all the nice uh, graphics and you can see uh, visually uh, what's going on. Anyway, so I'll read my um, data set here and... Um, .csv. And um, as you can see, all the way from the beginning, if you read uh, you read it into a Dask data frame, it's already lazy. So all of the Dask objects are uh, lazy. Uh, so data frame, uh, bags, uh, arrays, uh, delayed objects, all of these, they're all lazy. So if you try to output it, you see that there is no content. Um, the actual, it knows the actual metadata at the top, uh, the column names, but there's no actual content. All it does is just tells you that I, I'm going to plan on reading this in 84 petitions, but it hasn't actually read uh, anything. Now, you may wonder what types, how, how can it know the types? It actually, this is what the types by doing some statistical sampling here and there. So often it will get the types wrong. And then later on, you might get into trouble when you're running calculations. So it just goes in samples in a few places in the columns and makes a good guess what the type is. Uh, but it's not guaranteed to be right. Anyway, so here you can see it's already planning to, um, to uh, 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 already added one uh, layer to the graph. So everything it's planning goes into this uh, uh, DAG directed acyclic graph or uh, just graph, say for short. So it's just added one layer for partitioning and uh, reading this thing, which is it's planning to do. So, anyway, so as I said, that's the first encounter of laziness. It's the data frame itself when it's read is lazy. Whereas if you were doing pandas, everything now would be in memory. So you can actually load it, you can look at all the numbers and all the types have been resolved and everything. So that's one uh, uh, already symptom of laziness. So if you want to see what the chart looks like, the, so you can see at the bottom is too small, but that's, uh, um, yeah, that's probably the best we can do. Uh, but you can see if you count them, you'll probably find 84 of these. The circles are just uh, function to calls and the rectangles, the tiny rectangles above them, they're just results. Uh, so you can see that it's planning to partition this in, into 84 partitions and load them up. So at any time, if you're not sure, you can always do um, uh, visualize on any desk object. Remember, the desk uh, object, they store the, the charts. They don't actually store any numbers. So you can do any time you want to look at the chart, just do visualize on any desk object that will tell you how it's planning to compute that object. Now, uh, oddly enough, you can still do a head and still take a peek at the top 
of the data, not all of it. So head will still work uh, if you want to what numbers are, uh, but um, that's about as much as you can uh, get. Uh, okay, so to illustrate how visualize and persist work together, we'll do a few calculations and we'll use both uh, both of these uh, commands together. Okay, so if you wanted, say, to count the missing values and null values in each column of the data frame, okay? So you would do just the usual uh, pandas command, df, and then is null, which returns just a Boolean uh, array, and uh, aggregate sum, which will, by default, uh, um, do the aggregation over the columns. So this will return a series, which contains the number of missing values uh, in each column or in of the data frame. Now, again, ag since we haven't really uh, um, done anything different except add to the calculation, that's another lazy object. And it tells you at the bottom here, it's the DASK series structure. Okay, so this thing again now will store the more slightly more complex uh, DAG. Okay, so this is another lazy object. It'll just store another graph, and now it tells you that the graph has become now four layers. Okay, if you want to double check, yes, it's a series, just like it says here at the top. It's a desk uh, series, and again, you can visualize it, see what's stored inside missing values, and that's the DAG, and it's got a few three more layers, uh, which tells it how it's going to do this calculation. Okay, so if we continue a little bit more and try to compute the, just the percentage of the, the null values in each column. So you notice that I can just use the usual uh, pandas command, mix them with the dask, because remember the dask data frame is just a, a bunch of smaller pandas one. Here it's 84 the number of partitions. So you can mix, use the usual uh, pandas stuff uh, together with the dask, but you will always get, of course, a dask object. So here, the another series, uh, which contains just the percentages of null uh, values in each column. And again, if you do a type on it, you'll see that it's a series. You can visualize it. It's too big, I'll click expand anyway. It's a mess, but anyway, you get the idea that it's just another more complicated graph. Now, um, okay, I'll just, um, so let's say we want to inspect what this thing gave to see which columns have the largest number or fraction of uh, null values, okay? So now, whenever you want to get a number out of a desk object, you have to do compute. So what will co compute will do is go in, look at the graph that's stored in a desk object and materialize it. So basically it will zip through it and give you the final result. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is once, which is I wrote it at the end, once that's go through the DAG, as soon as it's done with dependencies that it doesn't need, it'll throw them away. So they will be purged out of memory. So it will scan from the beginning of the DAG all the way to the final result. And as soon as it doesn't need any intermediate results anymore, it'll just get rid of them because the whole point is about uh, memory management in Dask. Otherwise, you're back to Pandas if it retains everything. So it'll get rid of any dependencies it doesn't need, it continues through the DAG. Okay. Now, once you call compute, and you materialize the DAG that's stored inside the desk object, you're going to get a pandas object, okay? The pandas object will be stored all in memory. It's just a number uh, or whatever results are in there. Here it's a series. So it's this is back to pandas. Now, this is fairly small, so it's okay to call compute here. You won't run into any RAM problems, okay? So this is the series that we got. And if you want to check again what the type is, you see that this is a pandas series. It's no longer uh, 
task object because you materialized it. And again, uh, if you try to run in visualize, you're going to get an error because this is a pandas object that actually stores numbers. It doesn't store it. So here you see you get an error basically if you try to materialize a pandas object, of course, because it doesn't contain a graph. So anyway, let's continue. So that's the idea about compute here. Okay, so we saw visualize and compute is that whenever you want an actual, you want Dask to go through the a graph and give you the number, you invoke compute. It, it scans through the graph, computes everything. As soon as it's done with intermediate results, throws them away and then gives you just the final answer in a pandas object, depending on what you ask for. Okay. So um, let's continue to have a look at what syst does. Um, so let's now, if we look at the stuff that is returned, you can see at the bottom here, there's a chunk of column here with have a relatively large, say 5%, large number of missing values in there. So let's say you were cleaning up this data frame, you probably would want to throw away these columns, okay? So let's go ahead and throw away these columns. Now, remember here, this guy was a pandas series, okay? So I just put it, uh, I index on this uh, logical array here on this mask, and I grab, and I just the index, grab the labels of the bad columns. Okay, so I grab the labels of bad columns because I want to drop them. Okay, so this is all just and the stuff here. Uh, again, and this object, I grab the labels. And now I'm back to working with desk. So I just go back to my desk data frame and I'll use my list here and this list inside here of the bad uh, columns. Again, mixing the two is fine. And I drop these columns from the desk data frame. Okay. So now we're back to, again, a uh, desk object. So it's going to be storing uh, just another graph. Here it's two layers because I just basically started from a series. Just this got broadcast to all all the workers, each one dropped the columns in their little pandas frame, okay? And then they communicate with each other um, to give me the cleaned up uh, desk frame. But again, no calculation because I haven't called compute yet. So if you look again, this is another desk object. And once again, if you want, you can still take it with the head at the top of it, uh, only the top of the object. And if you want to uh, visualize it, you can see this is just two layer. So basically one layer it just uses the same DF that we loaded, the 84 partitions at the top. That's just one layer. And the second one just um, drops um, the stuff that's in that list of names, drops those columns out of it. Okay, so here you might be tempted to do a compute to look at this uh, gigantic uh, this is probably not a good idea because if you do compute on a large a desk object, it's all going to be materialized in your one physical RAM. So it's very possible you're going to get, run into the same uh, memory problems that you were trying to avoid by using desk because you're back to trying to use pandas with something gigantic. Okay, so it's not a good idea, and that's actually advice that they give on the desk uh, site. It's not a good idea to call compute on something uh, on a something gigantic because it'll return a huge pandas object, and it may uh, that's going to sit obviously because it's a pandas object. It'll sit in a single physical RAM, so it might cause you trouble. Okay, uh, so here in this instance, what you want to do is to do persist the thing. So this is the F reduced, persisted. I just persist 
this object. In other words, rather than materializing this thing and putting it in a single pandas object that will sit in RAM, okay, it's just going to sit there unless you delete it, okay? Rather than doing that, you'd want to persist the last layer in your graph before the final result, okay? So the F resource here, just before it ends up being collected and sent into a pandas object, I decided to reduce all of the, uh, persist all of these results. So these are the little pandas frames, each one cleaned out from those uh, bad columns, but they're sitting there. They haven't been collated yet into a single pandas data frame. Okay? So you can persist those, and they will stay in there. Because remember, otherwise, as soon as you run compute, everything gets cleaned out from the uh, from your uh, graph. Okay? So again, if you look at it, it's persisted. It's not yet, it hasn't been, it's not the uh, final result. It's just sitting in RAM. And here, if you look at the visualize, you can see that's the layer. That the boxes, remember, the rectangles are results. So those are the actual uh, endless frames that sit inside the desk data frame, and each one has already the cleaned out columns uh, from it. So it doesn't have to be redone. So now here is the nice thing. Um, okay, so this is a desk data frame, and uh, that's what it looks like. And okay. So this is the one uh, before persisting. So I have the F-reduce and the F-reduce persisted. It, the one that's uh, reduced, again, is a delayed object and it has two layers, okay? That's the one that has not been persisted. If you look at the one that's been persisted, it's just the final results here, the little boxes, okay? So here is the benefit of doing uh, persist. Okay? So let's say you wanted to do some aggregation on a reduced um, frame. Okay, so I'll do say a min and a max, okay, just for uh, as an example. And you decide to run the minimum aggregation on the reduced one, which has not been persisted. Okay, so what will happen? You invoke compute, it, it runs the <clears throat> calculation for you, right? Uh, finds the minimum in every column of the reduced one. And you can see this one takes one minute, uh, roughly four seconds. So let's say later you decided, okay, I think I want to find the maximum or any other aggregate. Okay. So you do another calculation here. Okay. You run the same thing on that um, data frame, which has not been persisted. Okay. Um, and roughly about a minute. Also, so what's happening is every time you run the compute on that thing, it goes through, it runs the whole DAG, throws away all of the intermediate result and keeps only the final result, which is the series here, the panda series. If you decide to do another calculation, it'll again construct the whole thing. And in other words, load up the data frame, the 84 partitions, get rid of the bad columns, you know, um, different partition will communicate together regarding the minimum or maximum and give you the final in this frame. So doing compute on something that takes a long time, okay, to do, or is too large to dump into a pandas object is always a bad idea. So in cases like this, what you want to do is to assist the object because then those that before last layer in the graph is maintained in memory. You don't have to, every time you need to do an operation, you don't have to recompute the whole DAG. You just took this final results, that clean, in this case, the cleaned up data frame, and just run the aggregation on it. So you can see here, if I use the assisted frame, and I run the minimization, uh, finding the minimum values in each, the column runs in about three seconds. Okay, why? 
because already the part that partitions reads the partition cleans up the columns from each of those small that's already done and it's just sitting there waiting for you so the only thing that gets done here is finding the minimum in each one of those uh, pandas frames and comparing the minimum so you can find the minimum in each column okay so again if i decide to do another operation on the aggregate uh, uh, stuff again i want to do a maximum again about three seconds compared to roughly one minute of doing the stuff on the non-persisting not persisting uh, persistent frame uh, where, which will take you about one minute so basically the lesson here is try to do visualize whenever you want if you want to see what's going on what's stored inside the desk object um, do compute only on either um, small uh, objects, uh, that stuff that will return only small pandas object, and is fairly quick to repeat. Okay, because once you do compute, if you change your mind, you have another idea, you want to redo it, it will have to do whatever you did before from zero. Okay, say loading the initial stuff, um, cleaning it up, and all that stuff that has to be redone, redone every single time you do uh, compute. So that's compute. And as far as persist, use it on stuff that will take significant uh, amount of time to do each time because then you have to otherwise redo it all over again. So persist any um, intermediate results you reach that you probably want to work on some more and there's no reason to keep redoing the same stuff. Okay, so once you reach like a milestone in your notebook, Persist that result and also persist um, stuff that if you end up dumping into a pandas object is going to cause memory problems for you. Uh, so I think that's that's about it for the three um, uh, commands that I wanted to cover holder.